Today, we're looking at Dimine's Saddle Brown. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, Dimine's Saddle Brown is a brown ink. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I put the ink into a different pen for a day. I then put it into a Levenger True Writer with a broad nib to take my notes for this video. Now, before we get to the writing samples, let's look at the sciencey bits. Up first is the chromatography, and I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And what we see is this very light, kind of purpley color that pushes its way up and we start to see the brown, and at the very top, we start to see these kind of specks of darker purple at the very top line. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. The line across the bottom is very dark, very there. It doesn't seem to be moving, and that was only 10 minutes that I waited. Now, it really does show that the, the darker purple that used to be at the top, that's not at the top of this chromatography. That light purple still pushes its way up, and we still see that same brown in the same way. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on a page, and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pen. Now, I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it handles itself pretty well. That extra fine becomes about a medium in writing, but it doesn't blur out, become unreadable. It makes me feel safe using this as a note taker. Now, water is reactivating and lifting almost all the inks off. We see a lot of that kind of purpley tone still on the paper, not really leaving. Pen Flush did exactly the same thing. You really do see, even in the darkest areas, a lot of that kind of purple tone left behind. And it's not common that Diamine has inks that are this resistant to the Pen Flush, but they've had a few. One-third bleach solution is completely removing it. Now, the one-third bleach solution, if you use it, immediately flush your pen with water to get that out and not rust your metal parts. For the inks I've tested, I've found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Diamine Saddle Brown has a viscosity of 2.27, making it normal. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done with the extra fine and medium nib on Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia paper. For the inks I've tested, I have found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Diamine Saddle Brown has a dry time of 17 seconds, making it completely normal and average. Now, let's look at the writing samples. I pick this ink up in sample form, and to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. I'm a little off center and having trouble in my chair. Oh no. All right. <laughs> The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no real shading coming through with the 1.1, which we'll see through the writing samples is not very common. It has a lot of shading that it likes to give out. The extra fine is a slightly lighter tone. The extra fine has no feather, spread, halo, sheen. It has lovely spots of shading, like in the starts light and gets very dark. Quick starts very dark, gets much lighter, gets super dark at the K. Brown starts light and gets dark. Fox starts light and gets dark. Did I say brown starts, brown starts dark and gets light? Over starts light and gets very, very dark. So it's... Beautiful shading in this ink. 11 seconds to dry. The medium is the same tone as the extra fine, so it's slightly lighter than that 1.1. The medium has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and it has beautiful shading. The Q right up at the top is very dark, but the rest is a nice mid-tone. It works its way very, very dark at the K. Brown starts dark, and around the R, lightens up. Fox starts very light and gets dark. Beautiful stuff. 16 seconds to dry. 
The scrubby of both the extra fine and the medium show plenty of color variation. And we got plenty of color variation. And the smear test you could definitely recover if you smeared while you were writing. Tomoy River. We get no bleeding. We get ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shading. The extra fine is a significantly lighter tone than the 1.1. The extra fine has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and we lose the shading on this paper, which is very common. 18 seconds to dry. The medium is significantly darker than, it's, a, it's like three, four shades darker than the extra fine, but it is nowhere near as dark as the 1.1. The medium has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and no shading, 24 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both shows really no color variation, and in writing we got none. And the smear test, I don't think you could recover this if you smeared while you were writing. Rhodia, no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and no shading. The extra fine is a significantly lighter tone. The extra fine has no feather, spread, Halo Sheen, it does offer some very nice shading again. The starts very light and gets very dark. Over starts very light and gets very dark. Brown starts dark and works its way light and gets very dark at the end again. Fox starts very dark on the left side of it. Gets to a mid-tone right in the center and gets super dark at the X. Beautiful. 13 seconds to dry. The medium is a darker tone than the extra fine, but not as dark as the 1.1. The medium has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and some beautiful shading spots that are going on. Not all over, but in quick, it starts very dark over here. It gets very light in this part of the Q in that loop. And then it gets dark at the Q, at the U again and stays very dark. Over has some very nice light spot at the top of the O, light spot in the edge loop of the E, and the rest is very dark. Lazy starts very dark and becomes a nice mid-tone on the Z and the Y. Beautiful. Not a ton of shading going on here, but where it is, it's nice and it stands out well. 17 seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine shows plenty of color variation, and we got plenty. The scrubby of the medium shows none, but the medium showed some, and when it did show it, it was beautiful. The smear test, you could recover this if you smeared while you were writing. So white lines paper. Now there's some spots where it's going in quite deep, and it's spotting, okay? It's just spotting a little bit. It spots a little here, here. It's spotting, but it is not making the back of the page unusable despite all these little circles I'm putting on here. The back of the page is not unusable, which is unusual for this. This paper is not really made for fountain pens. It performs very well here. There is some ghosting, but I don't think it would stop most people from using the back of the page. Definitely does not touch the page underneath. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shading. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the 1.1. Just a, a, like two or two shades, two tones lighter. No feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shading, two seconds to dry. The medium is significant, or is that three, you know, that two, three shades darker than the extra fine. It's the same tone as the 1.1. The medium has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, four seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it and we didn't get it. The smear test, you could definitely recover if you smeared while you were writing. This is Strathmore writing paper. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. It's a nice correspondence paper, very nice. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and no shading. The extra fine is only a hair, just the, like that one tone difference than the 1.1. So it's barely lighter. The extra fine has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shading comes through on this paper, five seconds to dry. The medium is darker than the extra fine. It's the same tone as the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, nine seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation and we didn't get any. This is a little more absorbent paper, and that tends to happen with the more absorbent papers. The smear test you could definitely recover if you smeared while you were writing. So this is P. Berger. It's a French rule. It's a student paper. It's, you know, there's no ruling on the back. You're not expecting to really use the back. So if you didn't think you were ever going to use the back, this is all perfectly fine. Other than that, we get a lot of deep spots coming through. You could not use the back of the page, but it does not touch the page underneath. 
the 1.1 has no spread, but it's got tiny feathers all over it. Being a more absorbent paper, more fibrous, you can feel it. It tends to happen. No halo, no sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a significantly lighter tone. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen. And we do get some shade. The H in the is significantly darker than the rest of the word. The K in quick. The X in fox. The R in over. The is a very dark word compared to all the words around it. Three seconds to dry. So to get some shading on this paper, when it dries so fast, that's amazing. The medium is a darker tone than the extra fine. It's the same tone as the 1.1. The medium has no, er, sorry, it has no spread. It has tiny feathers all over it. So we didn't get the feathering in the extra fine, but we do get it with the 1.1 and the medium for them being wetter. So a drier pen with this, way to go for it. The medium has that, that, that no spread feathers. It has no halo, no sheen, and no shading comes through here. It took six seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine and the medium, well, the extra fine looking far left to far right shows some color variation. We did get some little color variation up here, so it was nice. The medium showed none and we got none. And the smear test, you could recover this if you smeared while you were writing. And that is all that I have for the writing scene. Instead of finding inks that look like Dimine Saddle Brown, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I chose a nice orange ink, properly named by Diamine as orange. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I would invite you to subscribe. So what do I think of Diamine's Saddle Brown? It performs amazingly. The shading that it gives is very, very nice. It's slightly too dark to be a perfect brown for me. If it was the slightest bit lighter, it would let some of the shading come through even more, but then the tone would become perfect for me. However, this is an amazingly nice to look at brown ink. Thanks for watching.